Take a look at these two drawings. One is a goofy, blobby cartoon octopus, and the other looks like a professional, realistic illustration. What's crazy is that these are both from the same chapter of Hunter x Hunter. In fact, they're literally on the same page, like two inches away from each other, and yet it doesn't feel out of place. Somehow, these contradictory drawings coexist seamlessly. How? Well, after reading all 400 chapters, I can tell you it's because Yoshihiro Togashi is really good at drawing. No, seriously. This dramatically varied style is a core facet of his artwork, and this is just one instance of this artistic juxtaposition that's present all throughout the series, which is what I'm going to be talking about in this video. Here's another example of the same character Palm talking to Kilua. These characters look like they belong to two entirely different series. Kilua has large, simple eyes. His eyelashes are a single, sharp mass. His nose is small and pointy with no details. His mouth and eyebrows are a single, tiny line. And his hair is simplified to sharp, triangular chunks. Palm, on the other hand, has smaller, human-proportioned eyes with individual eyelashes. Her nose is more detailed, too bigger, with a bridge and individual nostrils, and her lips are prominent, with hatching to show detail. Her hair is drawn with individual strands, and so are her eyebrows. In most other comics, if these two walked up and casually started interacting, it would immediately break the illusion. But this is chapter 293 of Hunter x Hunter, and the reader has been primed to expect this level of variability from the very beginning of the story, allowing for a huge amount of flexibility as the art progressed and changed over time. This is something that inevitably happens to all long-running manga. As the mangaka hones their craft, the art morphs and solidifies into a more specific identity. Like my favorite manga, Garfield. Here's Garfield when it was first published in 1978. He looks like a disfigured Muppet, but jump to 2023, now he looks like a scary alien or something. Jesus Christ. A similar thing happens to Palm. Check out how much her design changes as the story goes on. When she's first introduced, her face is hidden behind her stringy black hair, and she wears this house elf looking ass dishcloth. But then we get to see these beautifully drawn shots of her face. Look at how expressive she is. Then she goes on a date with Gon and has a whole makeover, goes crazy, gets into disguise to infiltrate the chimera ants, and then turns into a chimera ant. Notice how her old design is referenced here. The string black hair is back, but her face is exposed, more confident and less insane, showing how she's progressed as a character. Now, Palm's design changes are assisted by the fact that she undergoes a lot of physical transformations within the story. But what about characters that are technically the same, but are just drawn differently? Take Netero. At first, he looks like this silly, charming old grandpa character, but later on he's looking like this. Holy shit! Fucking haunting. Even after they blew his arm, leg, and dick off, he's still smiling. And like Palm, it's all executed with purpose. He is a silly, charming old grandpa at the beginning, but as Togashi wanted to explore a new aspect of him as this extremely powerful Nen sorcerer, he reworked him to have this ancient, serious look. Even Gon, whose core design doesn't change much at all throughout the series except for his eyes getting further apart, is a shining example of Togashi's ability to switch from realism to cartoonish exaggeration on a dime. Notice how simple and animated Gon is. He looks like he belongs to a bygone vintage era of manga. His hair is sharp and geometric like Kilua's, and his eyes are just big dots with a curved line. This hyper-stylized way that Gon is typically drawn in is what makes shit like this so unbelievably impressive. Here, after getting his shit kicked in, Gon has an actual nose, lips, individual hairs, a swollen eyelid with realistic hatching to create texture, and yet it still retains his overall design. In order to pull this off, we need to know not only how to simplify the human form into this, but also how to selectively reverse engineer its features. Gon's design is so cartoonish it's almost uncanny among his more realistically drawn companions, and Togashi utilizes this to lean into his darker side, representing Gon's borderline sociopathic tendencies and unhinged sense of revenge. The same face that can represent childish glee and wonder can be twisted into a haunting, otherworldly look. Then there are the characters who don't necessarily undergo transformations, yet still dramatically change in appearance as the style solidifies over time. Like Leorio, who starts off looking rather horrifying, but 400 chapters later, his features have been simplified to their most distinct characteristics. Or Kurapika, who looks childish at the beginning of his revenge mission, but now looks like a hard-ass gangster. Ilumi goes from being totemo kawaii to being really fucked up. <laughs> what did they do to him? Krollo needs to keep his headband on at all times, and Hisoka's eyes get bigger and less squinty. As I mentioned before, 
the only reason Hunter x Hunter can get away with this art style is its appearance from the very beginning. Because you're so used to seeing panels like this all the way from the earliest chapters, it's never jarring or out of place. Compare this to other shonen, who tend to pick one side of the spectrum and stay there exclusively, like One Piece, which, while also having incredible artwork, leans heavily into the cartoonish side. Whereas, say, Attack on Titan, the art of which is, uh, debatable, stays grounded and realistic. Imagine Attack on Titan, but one of the characters just looks like this, and nobody in the story ever questions it. Whereas in Hunter x Hunter, you can have Cheadle and Beyond Netero talking to each other, and you just kind of accept it because you're so used to shit like this happening. The coolest and most impressive part about the art isn't even its technical proficiency, but rather how it truly serves a purpose of setting the tone of the story. In the same way that the art can go from silly, whimsical cartoonishness to highly detailed gore, the store constantly flips from an exciting shonen to exploring deep and emotional themes. One minute, Gon is learning how to catch birds with his fishing pole. The next minute, a guy is spewing leeches onto his enemy's open wound so that they can lay eggs in his organs and his bladder explodes the next time he takes a piss. It's in seeing these clashing art styles and characters interact that creates so much intrigue. As mirrored by the artwork, the darker aspects of our existence are always churning beneath the surface of the masks we wear to disguise them. That is what makes the art of Hunter x Hunter so good. But, uh, you know, it's still not quite as good as uh, my horse prints.